What makes a great running shoe? Well, it's largely up to personal preference and the type of activities being performed. Biomechanical laws and experimentation can show us what truly makes a difference. And running shoes have many jobs, including absorbing impact, providing effective ground reaction force, foot ventilation, and among other functions. And how well a shoe does its job can be influenced by tweaking biomechanical variables. For example, impact is pressure experienced by the foot, and that can be defined as a force magnitude over a given area. And these variables have an inverse relationship, meaning that if a shoe provides a greater surface area for the impact, it will endow less stress on the joints involved in our kinetic chain. Um, in the article con concerning biomechanical variables and the perception of comfort in running shoes with different cushioning technologies, they discovered that biomechanical parameters of three types of shoes, they used air, gel, and adiprene, do not necessarily equate to a perception of comfort, and just because a shoe offers low impact does not actually ensure comfort. In fact, only the adiprene shoes in this trial could predict comfort from knowing plantar pressure, and more of the evidence of comfort came from the push-off rate and the level of pressure measured over the forefoot. Some shoes try to offer more rigid styles of support with a provided foot posture or lots of cushioning, while others embrace a barefoot model of running shoe. And potential energy is dis distinguished by mass, gravity, and the height of a drop. And so this would infer that if you have a thick and bouncy sole, then a shoe could offer a greater mechanical advantage. But this can also negatively affect the stability of your joints while you're running. And as a former professor of mine used to say, you can't fire a cannonball from a canoe. So this can ultimately negatively affect your running performance or your running time. The barefoot model focuses on proprioception and getting a naturally smooth gait a heel lift on lots of running shoes is thought to encourage heel striking in running, which can be understood as breaking. And learning to land midsole, which is encouraged through barefoot running shoes, can help you develop a flowing stride and even reduce injuries. Effective motion control running shoes compared with neutral shoes on tibial rotation during running, which is another article I read, did a wonderful job of comparing the pros and cons of both styles of shoes. And while it is still a personal decision, I would encourage anyone to try barefoot running shoes or just running barefoot in general to get an idea of your natural foot posture so then you can decide where you need more padding without hindering adaptions in the future. And I believe that combining the idea of a spring-loaded running shoe with a barefoot running shoe is optimal because if the shoe has a malleable material on the ball of the foot and more mildly on the midsole, then we may see a greater ground reaction force without the concern of the increased injury. And furthermore, with the barefoot structure, the shoe will encourage even less injuries because of the proprioceptive training that the shoe is providing. And it's providing that training through increasing balance, dynamic stability, strength, and flexibilities in areas like the Achilles and the calf muscles. And so this will improve your performance. Thank you.